Hi folks, Pete here from Ashton's Cars. And today I'm showing you around our 2012 Range Rover L320. This is a Range Rover Sport, and it's one of the last incarnations of this original shaped Sport, which I think is a bit of an icon these days. Good looking car. Now this car's done 148,000 miles and it has featured previously on our channel when we pitted it up against the L322 and showed you the various differences between the two cars. So that was a little while ago and I've decided to give it a little freshen up now, ready to sell. So what I've done first of all with the car is I've put a new MOT on it, um, but to do that I've renewed the brakes on it, I've renewed the handbrake module. Anyone who knows anything about Range Rover L320s will know that's a common fault on these cars, so that's all been changed. Um, and I've also put four brand new tyres on it. But I wanted to go a little bit further than that because I wanted to cosmetically give this car a little bit of a facelift and modernise it a little bit. And what I have done, it's it already had the quite nice 20-inch 20, 20 um, multi-spoke alloy wheels, but I've had them uh, refurbished in black, which I think looks really, really good on this car. It matches in with the black door pillars uh, that give it that sort of trademark floating roof design. I've also renewed the side steps on it because this had silver side steps on it before and they were looking a little bit tatty. So I'm just let these cars go past and I'll do a proper view of the side of this car. As soon as I go anywhere everyone wants to drive there. There we go. Look at that. It's got the black side steps which are like a high gloss finish which blends in with those black alloy wheels which blends in again with the factory black pillars on the car and the tinted glass. I think it's just given the car a little bit of a lift, made it look a bit more modern, hopefully you will agree. And it, it just makes it that little bit more striking, I think. Um, the side steps I wanted to change anyway, they were a bit tatty and the wheels had a little bit of minor curbing on them. So I wanted to give them a bit of a, a refresh regardless. And I think by going black, it's really sort of lifted the car and it's made these black pillars stand out a little bit more as well in the black tints. So there's the wheels. They're all identical. Brand new tyres on them all. 275 20s are the tyre size on this particular car. And then you've got the side steps as well in black. And the side steps are brand new items. Obviously you do get this sort of flared out sort of effect from the door anyway, but you have got a good size step to stand on to get into the car with those steps on it. It does make accessing it a lot easier. Apart from that, I've kept it more or less the same. It already had high gloss black here, and that's where I wanted to sort of tie it all in together really with the steps, the wheels, and that, and that vent and the pillars there. And obviously it already had the wind deflectors on it all around as well from the previous owner. But I feel the little changes we've made have given it a new lease of life in terms of looking the part, looking very modern. And of course it doesn't look like a 140,000 mile car. Um, nothing of the sort. I mean, if I told you it had done 70,000 miles, I think just by looking at it, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So it's always been a very good looking car this, but it was just crying out for some real refurbs and the, the steps. And I just didn't have time to do it before. I've used it a little bit myself and I was quite happy with it as it was, but I do feel now it really does look the part on our forecourt. So I'm very, very happy with it. Now, for those who haven't seen this car before, I'll take you around the interior of it as well and show you the car in all its splendor. It's a grotty day today though, but can't be helped. We are in Wales and uh, that comes with the territory. Let's get this up. I keep forgetting it's an electric tailgate on this car. I've opened it manually now. It does work electrically. Huge boot and it's got the proper Land Rover mat in it as well, which does save the boot floor. I've got these, I don't think those are the factory tail ends on this car, but someone's obviously put those on. It does look nice though. So. Um, let's, let's use the electric motor to put it back down, shall we? You press a button by here and it all closes. I don't know if you saw there's a box in the back, that's because this car's got a DVD system in it and it came with a brand new DVD player, um, which I'll get installed on it. I've never used it because you can only watch it from the back seats and of course I'm never sat in the back. But here you go. It's just a lovely interior on this one. 
because it's got the stitch leather. It's perforated as well. This leather is a nice finish on it. And of course you've got that DVD player by there, that flips down. I don't think it's currently working because uh, the previous owner has given us a new one to use, but for some reason my video has gone all blurry there, so let's just reset it one second. That's better. I've no no idea why it did that. It is a very dull today today. I think my, my little phone camera is working quite hard to do this video. So let's, let's press on. Now the, the other great thing on these cars is it has got the keyless entry, keyless ignition on it. So if I press a button by here, it locks the mirrors fold in electrically. And when I open the door again, it unlocks. Now I haven't cleaned this car today. Um, hardly worth it as you can see with the weather we got. So um, excuse the fact there is some muddy footprints on my mats, but have a look at the dashboard. See what you think of the elegant design of this car. I think the sports of this era with their revised dashboard do really look the part. And of course this one being keyless, it's got the push button start on it and it's got the, uh, the gear change there with the modern eight speed transmission. Three litre diesel in this was the TDV6. And the mileage on it is 148,000 miles. But it's got full service history. And one thing I would say with a, with a Range Rover like this is buy one that's got full service history. Even if it's higher mileage, I would rather see a high mileage one with service history over cars that have done a low mileage but haven't ever seen the workshop. You really don't want to be buying someone else's trouble. This car now is, what, 12 years old? And when you look at it like that, it's only really done 12,000 miles a year. So it's not an astronomical figure, that. No. As you can hopefully see, the dashboard is very well laid out on it. It's got all the cup holders by here. It's a much more modern dashboard than you get in the L320 or in the earlier, so in the early L320s or the L322. You do more sit inside this car Whereas on the L320s, uh, L322s, you sit sort of on top of them, you do sit a bit higher. Again, I've gone blurry, bear with me while I reset that. There. I think I must have had some sort of moisture on the lens or something, because it's so wet out there, it's a horrible day. Um, right, so I've got the key in my pocket, as you saw it, the door opened automatically for me when I touched the door handle, and when I push the button by here, it should start for me automatically. So let's just do the startup sequence, and apart from it telling me I've got low fuel, you will be pleased to see there are no warning lights on this car. Uh, that's because I've just had it all fully checked over in a workshop and MOT'd and it's pretty much as good as these things come. Um, very briefly, we've got the multi-interface display thing here. Uh, it has got the camera on it, so when I put it into reverse, we should see a clear view from the back. That looks quite good, doesn't it? And we have also got a, uh, let's put it back on to normal. We've got sat lav. I can press that button by there, it'll load the maps up for me, as long as I agree to its terms and conditions. It's kind of a semi, um, semi touchscreen thing this is, because you have got buttons by here to do some of the, the main things. If I want audio on, I can just press that button there and it'll load up the audio menu for me. But you can control everything else from the touchscreen as well. It's got enough um, sort of analog in it to make it feel like a proper car, if that makes sense. I'm not keen on cars that have got everything running through the touchscreen. And I've actually got my, my driver, who's a bit older than I am, finds it very difficult when you've got heating controls and stuff like that on the touchscreen. But you'll be pleased to see on the Range Rover Sport, they are fairly simple to use uh, by here. Heated seats, obviously, as well, for passenger and driver. I think we've even got some in the back, actually, on this particular one. And obviously, by here, we've got the electric handbrake. That's all brand new. And I've got the pre-programmed um, Land Rover settings here for the 4x4 system. The sort of special operations of uh, the four-wheel drive. It's got pre-programmed for snow, forest ruts, desert uh, and sand, and mud ruts as well. Basically, it makes it quite foolproof. It'll change the way this car behaves according to the environment you are driving it in. Uh, and it makes it very, very easy to drive this car off-road or in snow or in any conditions whatsoever. Multifunction wheel with cruise control, phone, and uh, there's also a fridge underneath this 
cubby bay here. Very small one, but it, and it's run off the air conditioning of the car. Um, we've got the, uh, the cup holder cover there. Let me see if I can just pull this up. There's the fridge with an air freshener in it at the moment. That will keep your cans cool. It runs off the car's AC. And, well, when you buy a, a sort of later model of the L320 like this, you are buying a really, really good looking car that had all its sort of bugs sorted on it. Earlier ones were a little bit problematic, let's be honest. By the time they got to 2012, they ironed out all those bugs. And I do think it's one of the best Range Rover models, or well, best looking Range Rover models of all. It's got all the nice bits on it, like the keyless drive and stuff like that, which really do sort of make it feel very, very modern, despite it now being 12 years old. So, there you have it. I mean, I'll just flip the lights on so you can see that as well. Because I love the headlights on this car. They have got an auto mode. I'll just put the side lights on for a second. See, they've got those LED lights. I think they look really cool. It's got Xenons as well for the main dip beam on it. Just a really, really smart looking machine this is. In the right colour, I think, and now with those refurbished uh, alloy wheels and the, all the black uh, that we've put on there, the accessories, I think a very, very smart car for someone for not a lot of money. So, if you're interested in it, give me a call. It's going up for 9995 as car is, and these days you can't buy a lot for under 10 grand. So, this is a really well sorted Range Rover, and don't tell me, yes, you can get a cheaper one. Of course you can but it hasn't just had a new handbrake module, had the wheels refurbished, had a clean MOT like this one, and hasn't got full service history like this one. If you buy cheap of a Range Rover, you buy trouble. This is a very, very well sorted car. All the air suspension's working as it should, the handbrake's working as it should, there's no warning lights, and it's all guaranteed. So, if you're interested, give us a shout. My, my number, as ever, is 07932 873646. And the Range Rover Sport is available for delivery anywhere in the UK. In fact, this is one of a number of Range Rovers we currently got in stock. So let me know your needs and we'll, we'll see if we've got the car to suit you. That number one more time, 07932 873 646. Thanks once again for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day wherever you are. And we shall see you very soon. Goodbye for now.